Okay, in this item, we have a single base, single story frame, fixed connection at the left, and a pin foundation at the right. All other joints are rigid here. The uh, constant EI and also the same EI for the beams and the columns. Um, the, the way it's drawn that the beam is relatively the same length as the columns. There is a small, it looks like there might be a slightly shorter beam than, than a column, but we're asked to make a guess whether the frame sways to the left, to the right, or does not sway at all. Number one, we don't have a symmetric set of foundations and we don't have a symmetric load, so we should expect sway. The question just is, is it to the left or to the right? So let's talk about how this, how we might approach this. Um, if you looked at this in isolation, the beam, let's say, was fixed, fixed, we'd come along and say, okay, the moment at the left would be larger than the moment at the right. Uh, we call those the fixed end moments. Let's call the one at the left number one, the, the one at the right number two. And if we think through this from a moment distribution kind of perspective, that means the unbalanced moment is largest at the left as it compared to the right. And so when we, let's release that one first, and it kicks over the moment, a little bit over to the right, and we're going to go back and forth. We might think that M1 will turn out to be larger than M2. A lot depends upon the situation. Um, and it's going to turn out that they may be actually somewhat close to each other, but the bigger picture or bigger effect here is going to be that we have that zero moment down at that far right end. So every time we release this joint, what's going to happen is we're going to be kicking a majority of that unbalanced moment back over to the left. Yes, we'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but when we release the left hand joint, we're always kicking down to a joint that doesn't get released. And so that's going to be have uh, <coughs> excuse me two effects that are going to end up, and that is we can clearly anticipate that in both instances these joints are going to try to rotate inwards so that we start to develop some sort of smiley face sagging in the middle, but some sort of then inwards rotation of the joint. Now I'm going to temporarily show it as though it doesn't sway at all. We're going to get reverse curvature in the left column, and we're just going to get single curvature in the left if it didn't sway. The question becomes then, well, what force do we have to hold it there so that it doesn't sway? And we can kind of get insight into that by taking a look at what is going to happen with the moments, right? That the moment diagram we might anticipate is something like you see here, reverse curvature in the left. That means that at the top of the column, we're going to get two moments that act in the same direction. We'll have to have shear forces that oppose that, put that into uh, equilibrium. Right? And so that means you've got then a shear force in the column that becomes axial force in the beam, and likewise on over to that joint. Whereas in the far right column, we have just one moment no moment at the far end, so that means the shear has to look in those directions so that it comes and it opposes what happened in the far one. And this is not the end of the story, we have this artificial joint restraint that I'm going to make the argument that this M1 and M3 that we have here, that the addition of those two divided by this length is going to be such that whatever the moment two here is divided by the length coming up with that shear. Let's call this shear one. Really, it's an axial force now, so N1. And that shear force in the second column that I'm going to make the guess that N1 is greater than V2 because M1 plus M3 is greater than M2, right, with these heights being the same. Um, that's what we're really looking at here, summing the moments for the columns. And if that's the case, then if N1 is greater than V2, then AGR is going to have to be, um, then go in the same direction as V2. And that means if I were to release this, I'm temporarily trying to hold it from going to the right when I release it, it is going to move to the, to the right. And that's what we'll find out if we were to do uh, deeper math here. We find something like this is going to be the case. The how are you supposed to figure that out? 
from just the basis of what we've done. And one of them is you draw the moment diagram that suggests something to you. And again, this fixed end moment at the left being greater than the fixed end moment at the right. But that gives you some idea of the overall shape. But the bigger thing that we learned uh, in multiple times is that indeterminate frames will tend to move or sway towards the more flexible side when subjected to gravity loads. So that's the, to me, that's your answer that you have. Now how do you explain all this and why it really does go to the right? That's maybe a, a more detailed calculation that goes from doing this, but you can get there um, by arguing here. But this is what I really wanted you to pick up on in this exam item was that indeterminate frames will tend to sway towards the more flexible side. That's what we've seen a, a, a number of times here. There's other ways to begin to think about that as well. So for instance, you could start playing a game of, well, what would this look like if this were, say, symmetric structure with a symmetric load? What does that look like? And OK, well, now we don't have any sway, and we get that little sagging kind of thing. We're going to get the reverse curvature here. What would this be like if I went to the extreme where I said it was determinant, say with a pin and a roller, and that same load. Now this is, you got to be a little careful when we make this kind of a analogy because the indeterminate versus the determinant are distinctly different. But it, notice, when we release it and pop it over here at this right side, it's going to sway towards the right, towards that more flexible um, location. Right? And that, that's the be between these two that helps to start to get us to see what's going to happen here, that indeed this thing, when we release this R, it's going to, let me use a different color, it is going to sway to the right. Yes, we're going to get the kind of reverse curvature. We might even get a pathological situation here of not having reverse curvature if it sways to the right just enough. But it's going to go towards that more flexible location. There will be a little bit of frowny face right in there. The moments that we're going to end up with here, we'll have a larger peak moment in the middle as we've released and popped that thing. And the negative moments will get a little bit smaller as a result. And so will this right hand, uh, the moment at the top of the, the right hand column then is.